Greetings, how's everyone doing? So I'm coming and I don't have my mic on right now, so we're gonna do it without that. But I wanna talk about the tarot and pretty much an overview of the tarot. So just to summarize, the last time we were talking, I was talking about how important it was for you to understand the tarot if you're gonna be utilizing it for spiritual growth. And so one of the things that tarot is used for is um, tapping into the deeper part of yourself or reading your spirit or reading the underlining messages that are always, you know, at the at the base of everything that comes up, right? And so tarot is used also for awakening intuitive faculties. Uh, I have definitely used it for that. Uh, just a quick story about that. Over the years, I had so many different things that I wanted to do readings on. I mean, I really utilized divination as a tool and I did a lot of readings for myself to understand how to read for myself and people would say well you can't do readings for yourself or they didn't know how to but that was the one thing that I wanted to learn how to do was to do readings for myself because I spend the most time with me you know in this body so why not and it also helped out with me learning to trust my intuition as well outside of just using the cards so um you know, there were times when I'd be at home and, you know, I'd have career stuff coming up. I'd have very important relationship things that came up, self-realizations and, you know, personal development stuff I wanted to get into. And so I used the cards to weigh out which way I should uh, put most of my focus. I did go through a stage of being very confused about the readings because you go through that. So I would say definitely there is a phase of you know, assimilating a new way of, you know, looking at things. But what the tarot did help me do was understand the elements that were a part of my situations, help me to see some of the shaping factors for success. It would definitely point that out. I honestly feel like when I'm using tarot cards or any divination tool, it is me communicating with my own spirit, which is me. And so I'm not able to get that wrong. Now, whether or not I feel like doing the work associated with what I get in the reading, that's another thing. And it does take time to understand your readings. A lot of times because the mind is in the way of it and the mind doesn't have anything to do with it. But you can also read a, a card, you know, psychically. You can read it intuitively, same thing. You can read it by the color, by the letters uh, that are on there. You can count the numbers. You can... Um, there's going to be all kinds of messages on a spiritual path. Everything can possibly be a possibility, you know. And so it takes time for you to weigh out what things are a part of your reading versus what's not. And um, I find that tarot has definitely been good for meditation. You can do path working with it. We'll talk about that another time. Reflecting on your life, your day. Also, also, it's definitely good for like problem analysis, you know, figuring out the answers to problems, finding solutions when there seems to be no way to get through something. You know, so for instance, something just comes out of nowhere and blindsides you, like a car accident or something, and you're trying to figure out, what do I do? You don't necessarily want to call everybody up and ask them, but you want to get some clarity on this, knowing that you have to be the one to make the decision to do it. And so tarot can help with that. It also can help with brainstorming. I've used it for writing. You can use it for that. Problem analysis, again, we said that. And then decision making, you know, on certain things. You can use it for that. Uh, it also helps people to feel more comfort. With all the readings that I do, a lot of people come for readings just because they want comfort. They want to know they're going the right direction. They want to know they're not wasting their time, you know, um, planning something out with different ingredients or different elements and then come to find out, you know what, this isn't even what I want to do. They also use it for confirming the way they feel. And so it is a very gratifying thing when someone comes to you and then the cards, they speak directly to them. They speak directly to me. You can talk to your higher self through the cards. You can talk to your ancestors. You can talk to someone who has passed on to the other side as we, um, we can definitely do that. Um, Ascendant masters can be talked to, you know. You can even get general clarity from a reading without even having a question. That's how deep it is. That's how deep it is. Now, 
we talked about self-understanding, personal growth, you know, divination, things like that. And now I want to talk about the next part of this that you can use tarot for, which is to see about how your life will be transforming. Is as simple as having a conversation with someone, like, you know, a, a experiencing like a conversation between a father and daughter or something, for instance. It is the conversation that you would like to have with the spiritual teacher or someone, which, which is where the tarot cards kind of come in where they tell you, look, this is this journey of your life. These are some of the things that can happen on your journey throughout life. And someone's telling you a story about the possibilities and the choices that you have, right? Letting you know that you're essentially free. So that's what I look at, Tarot, The Fool's Journey. And that is the order that the cards fall in as we look at them. So this is going to open up when you play with the cards, when you touch the cards and all that kind of stuff. They have no life outside their own, you know. It is us that gives power to them. And the images come alive within each of us as we look at them. And all of us would have a different perception as to what they mean to us. So later on, we'll talk about how you can read cards intuitively, which is one of my favorite things to do, as well as following the rules as well. So you can do it either way you want to. And so tarot deck consists of like 78 cards generally for a tarot deck. Okay, so within those 72, 78 cards, 72 cards, whatever, is 78 cards, you have in there Major Arcana, which are the greater mysteries, and then you have the 22 trumps, and you have the 40 pips and the 16 court cards that are a part of that. They're broken down, and they are similar to modern playing cards. They truly are. Uh, in fact, they were made after them. There's a lot of similarities to them, but you got the pictures with tarot cards, you get full-on pictures versus just the symbols on the card, as you see with the playing card. Now, there are 22 major arcana trumps that are a part of this deck, and they depict pretty much um, allegorical, you know, situations in life, and these are images that show the steps of the fool's journey, which is each individual person's journey on their spiritual path in life. When they're born, is showing the possible path that they will, you know, we will all take in some form or fashion. Like we all will go through this journey in a certain way. And this is the path to the fool going towards enlightenment, which is really neat. So that means he's learning to realize himself, realize who he is, remember who he is, wake up to who he is. And that's why I really love the tarot and it really spoke to me because that is what I've always felt like my life has been about is coming here to remember who I am. And then later on, I learned, yeah, I need to learn how to integrate as well while I'm here and not just figure out, okay, why, how do I get out of this box, <laughs> you know? Um, so anyway, the other things that come up with the tarot, you know, in the fool's journey is the major arcana pretty much is going to affect or show situations in a person's life and inner states of you know, um, different profound things like their mental state, for instance, the way they're thinking in a situation, you know, what's working for them at the time. It's going to talk about different attitudes, different concepts that they can adopt to uh, go with the flow better, something they can change or shift to give them a better edge in the world, you know, so, or to reach their goal, to get to it. How do they do that? And it's going to show it in various ways. You can look at it in a mundane way, very spiritual, lofty, expanded way. So, yeah. Now, the 40 pip cards, they are going to include four suits. Basically, the wands, the pentacles, the cups, and the swords. And so, when you're dealing with that, it's going to be 10 cards each within those, okay? Within the 40 pip cards, they're broken down. And then... You also get with the pip cards, it's going to show like emotional states, things like that. It's going to also show these situations that are like so-called struggles. And um, it's also going to show like your belief system, things like that, and typical behaviors of a person. That's what those will show. Then lastly, we've got the 16 court cards or people cards. And these consist of like the kings, kings, and um, the pages. And you can see those as knights also. So those are the different suits that are in it, okay? And then um, 
in court cards, they're going to represent like different relationships and things. They represent actual people in our lives. So that's the most neat thing here because they show how different people will show up around us. Um, now, they also show like the way that these people can act towards us, how they see us, how they perceive us. You know, um, it shows authority, things like that. It also shows the parents. It'll show who's the elder, who's the younger people. It can also represent, you know, um, like knights, you know, they'll show like action and courage and things like that. Um, having the drive to get things done, endurance, how to proceed, what type of drive and endurance do you need to have? They'll show that. Um, you also see with young people in here too, you'll see them and it can also show the, the querent or you, um, what your questions are, the you know, energy around you right now that need, that can be read, that is, or, or what's accessible right now, what's easiest to reach for. And the wonderful thing about tarot is I want to tell you, tarot is not something that is just fixed one way. So there's so many ways you can read it. And likely so, so within these 78 cards in a tarot deck, they aren't just here to tell your, fu your future or anything like that. Although people do come to me to get those type of readings, you know, about destiny, about their life path, love, you know, a lot of love stuff. That's my specialty and life path and purpose. Motivation. Uh, a lot of times you can just use tarot for that. You want some motivation? Pull a card. Okay, if it's negative, how can you change that? What's working for you? What You can use cards for gratitude. So um, in the 22 major arcana or trump cards, it's going to show you 22 major arcana and trump cards depicting this fool's journey and it's going to show how he's going towards enlightenment you know and all the different mistakes and stumbles and things like that along the way him falling in love all kinds of yummy stuff right so it is mirroring life here on planet earth and it's so precise that cards have been created to show that that journey and um, the 40 pip cards, which are the cards that are ace through 10 of each of the suits, those cards are a part of it. And then the 16 court cards also, like I talked about, pages, knights, queens, you also have kings, those fall in the suit as well. So we talked about history a little bit, which one day we'll talk about that even more. Honestly, not so important to me because I know it, um, whatever has happened, it's migrated to what it is now. But I do give honor and, you know, thanks to those who did come before us who created the tarot. But I definitely know it has something to do with Kemet, with Egypt, I feel, and then so-called transferred or passed it over to people who hid it, kept it in secret. So those people were kind of living undercover, or living, living low, you know, or living um, behind the scenes. That's a better way to put it. And um, some people may have called those nomadic people, you know. Um, artists, um, people that are outside of the norm, gypsies, you know, you could call them wanderers, whatever, um, priest, priestesses. So with that, we're going to talk about, you know, you hear, when you hear the tarot, you don't hear about Kamet, Egypt much. You hear about Jung and Young and um, this doctor who spoke about, you know, he gave his wording on the tarot. Um, but one thing about tarot that I can tell you is that it works very well that with the Yijing. The Yijing, I've used it with various times, but the first way I started off with tarot, I wanna tell you, is Maduna Tear cards. And Madu the Maduna Tear has to do with ancient Kemet, it has to do with the Kemetic spiritual uh, system. And it was created in order for you to look at what the Word of God is, and the Word of God has to do with us, we are that which is, and that is what is animating our bodies right now. So it's not a separate thing. Um, the tarot and all that kind of stuff, okay? Now what I want to do is go into the fool's journey because I talked about that we were going to go into that next, but I wanted to go and break down a little bit about what the tarot cards um, were made up of, okay? And um, we said 78 cards. But we're going to go ahead and dive into the fool's journey right after this because that really deserves its own video because that's how in-depth it is. We have to go through about 22 cards for that zero all the way to the end, 21. 
So a total of 22 cards. We're going to go through that. And it should be fun. Get your tea. And let's go. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.